In this video, we're gonna introduce the idea of stocks and see generally how stocks can be implemented using C as our programming language. So remember in the last video, we talked about nodes and nodes had this idea of being able to store a value as well as a pointer to some other node. And that was able to create some sort of structure like a chain of different values together. We're basically applying this concept to be able to create a data structure where the last thing that was added to the data structure is the first thing that we remove. So that's the idea of a stack. It uses LIFO or last in, first out. And let me explain to you what that means. Suppose that we have this stack and I'm gonna use integer values for this example. So we'll say maybe we have a stack that has a value two. This is currently what we would call the top of the stack. So it's the top value. Now, when I add another value onto the stack, what happens is this two is going to point to that new value. So say the value that I'm inserting is three. Two would now be pointing to three. Now what happens is the top moves. It moves up here to the value that was just inserted. This is now the top of the stack. And then when I want to remove values from the stack, what I do is I remove the top value and I return that back to whoever asked for it. And then the value that's directly below it, in this case two, becomes the new top. So that's the general idea of what we're doing when we're talking about stacks. Now, how do we actually implement that? Well, we're gonna start off with some of the very basics. There's three files that I'm generally gonna be working with when I'm implementing a stack. So I have my node, which has a value, as well as a pointer to another node. I have a header file for my stack, and then I have a C file for my stack, which will be the actual implementation of the stack itself. Let's talk a little bit about the header file first. The header file is going to define our stack as well as all the functions that our stack will have. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to include node.h, which is the node that we're using for the stack. I need a few other things. I need standard def.h, and I'll talk about why we're gonna use each of these. Uh, I need uh, stdio as well, so we'll put that in. And that should be all we generally need. We'll add anything else if, if needed. And then we have our stack structure. So our stack structure has two things, as you saw from that example. It has a top, which is the current top value in the stack. And then in general, it's going to have a size as well. I like to put a size on the stack because it's really easy to keep track of compared to not having a size. So it's just like a better structure setup generally. So if I have a top, I'm gonna to set that up as a pointer. I'm gonna create a size as well. Now top doesn't necessarily need to be a pointer, but by making it a pointer, it makes the implementation of all of our other functions easier. So I'm gonna show it as a pointer, but just keep in mind that you could also not have as a, as a pointer, it just makes the code a little bit less clean. So we're gonna use a pointer for this. And then we have a few different functions that we want to have. We want to have a function that can initialize our stack. We want to have a function that can add values onto the stack. And then generally we're going to want something that can remove values from the stack as well. But just for now, we're just going to focus on initializing and adding values onto the stack. So let's focus on those two aspects. So with these different uh, declarations of our functions, we can move over to stack.c and actually implement these different uh, functions. So I've included stack.h here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create my init function. What my init function does is it initializes a stack and returns it back to the caller. So what I do is I say struct stack. I'm going to call mine rex because it's just the value being returned. And I'm going to initialize both the top and the size. The top is going to be initialized to null because when we start off, there's nothing on the stack at all. So we're going to represent that as null. And the size is going to be zero. There's nothing on the stack, so the size would be equal to zero. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to return that value back to whoever called this function. So the general idea is inside of this main, which is you know sort of our testing file here, what I could do is I could say stuck struct stack s equals init. When this init function runs, it creates a new stack with a null top and a size of zero it returns that back. So the result of this is we get this stack that has nothing on it. It just gives us a consistent implementation of our stack every time that we need one. That's the main purpose of the initialization. 
And then what we're going to do next is we're going to do our push. So our push is going to have a stack S and it's going to have a value that we're trying to add onto that stack. And like I said before, when we add values onto the stack, what happens is we push them onto the top. So they become the new top value. So first things first, we need to create a node that stores the value that we're adding onto the stack. The way that we do this is we say struct node star new node, it's a pointer, is equal to malloc size of struct node. So let me explain exactly how this works. So what's happening right now is when we enter this push function, what I did was I created this little block of memory that represents a node. There's nothing in this node yet. It doesn't have a value and it doesn't have any pointer. It's just some memory set aside that will eventually become a node. That's the main purpose of this malloc. It's to set up memory that is going to be used to create a node. So you can think of it like we're initializing just like this empty node. And what we're going to do is we're going to determine what value and what next pointer this node should have. And that's going to be based on this idea of whether there's something in the stack yet or not. So if the size of the stack is equal to zero, so there's nothing in the stack yet, we are going to take this node and we're going to make it the top of the stack. Now just really quick note here, remember stack is a pointer. That is why we're using this arrow notation here rather than the dot. The arrow notation is used because this stack is a pointer. So just, I want you to keep that in mind as we're going through this. Now new node is also a pointer. So when we reference its properties, we also use the arrow notation. What I want to do is I want to give this node a value. And that value is going to be the value that we're trying to add onto the stack. So its value is equal to val, this, this val that we're point, placing into this push, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, what should this node point to as it's next? Well, since it's the top of the stack and there's nothing else on the stack, the thing that follows it is nothing. There's nothing following this value. So it's going to be equal to null. There's nothing else following it. Then what we do is we say, okay, the top of the stack is going to be this new node that we created. And then once that's done, we are simply just going to increment the size by one because now the size is bigger by one, right? Now, the second case of this push is there's values on the stack. In this situation, new node's value is still set to val, but what changes is the next. What we want to happen here when we're considering this idea is basically what we have right now is we have something that's on the stack, right? So we have some value that's on the stack, and this is currently what the top is. If I want to add something new onto the stack, what I want to do is I want to get that node, I want to put the value in it, and then I want to make it point to what used to be the top of the stack. Then what happens is this new value that I'm inserting becomes the top, and it now points to what is the next thing in the stack, which was the previous top. So that's the way that this structure is set up. So we want the next of this node to point to what is currently on top of the stack. So S top like this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the top of the stack is equal to this new node because that's the new top since it was just inserted, right? And then of course, what I do is I increment the size by one. And there we go. We now have our push functional. So let's give this a try in main. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a few pushes. So I'm going to push onto the stack. Remember, it needs a pointer to a stack. So we pass the address of the stack onto push. And let's insert the value one. And then let's insert the value two. And then what I'm going to do to demonstrate if this is working is I'm just going to print out the top of the stack. So I'll print out the top value of the stack itself. Let's go ahead and compile this all together. Remember to compile this, we need stack.h, stack.c, node.h, and main.c. So we put all of those together 
into this big main here. And it looks like I just have a small error. I think I just forgot a semicolon inside of one of these. Yeah, I just forgot the semicolon for struct here. So let's give that another try. And oh, we also need to include standard lib.h because that's used for malloc. So you can see it's telling us that we don't have a library for malloc. That's why we're including standard lib.h. Now everything has compiled successfully and I can run main. And do you see that I get the result too? So what's happened here is we've done these different pushes on the stack. Let's consider everything that's happened so far. So when this first starts up, there's nothing on the stack. This first push here, what it does is it creates a node. The value of that node is one. And what it points to is it points to null. So it points to nothing. This is currently the top of the stack. So that's what happens after this first instruction. The second instruction creates a new node. That node has a value two. And then we make it point to the value one. And then we update the top to be this new value that we just inserted, this one right here. So when I go and I print out top.value, it goes to the top and gets this value here, which is two. That's why our output here is two. Now, if I were to get the thing that follows top, then we would see that that value is one. So what we could do is we could say uh, top next value like this, that should work to give us the next value in the stack. And you can see that that is indeed one. So you can see that it actually does follow this structure exactly. So this gets you introduced to the idea of stacks. We now have a stack that we can insert values onto and generally initialize in our program. So thanks so much for watching this video. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to implement the pop and peak operations, which will allow us to see the value that's on top of the stack, as well as remove the value that's on top of the stack as well. So that's what we'll take a look at in the next video. So thanks so much for watching.